Imagine we take 10,000 honeybees, remove their hive, then throw them into a freezer. We want to see whether or not they freeze to death. Now, you might wonder, who would be cruel enough to perform such an experiment? Her name is Mother Nature. A hiveless honeybee cluster can be exposed to ambient temperatures lower than negative 10 degrees Celsius. Yet, the puzzling thing is, they managed to survive. Now, I'm an applied mathematician. Where does math meet honeybees? My research is creating a mathematical model of this phenomenon. Rather than working with live insects, we use equations, variables, and functions to study the bees. Traditionally, the conventional means of acquiring data is to get a bee cluster, wait for them to swarm, then hire some undergraduate student to stick a thermometer into there. <laughs> In addition to the poor kid getting stung half to death, the bees are sometimes euthanized afterwards to, collect the, to complete the data collection, which is quite unfortunate considering their dwindling populations. Should my model become sufficiently accurate, biologists could run thousands of experiments overnight on their computer. This generated data can be used to supplement existing field results and would reduce the number of expensive field studies needed, especially when the data is hard to measure. My model examines how bees move to adapt to a change in temperature. So we introduce two dependent variables, temperature T and density rho. To model the temperature, we use the partial differential equation, the heat equation, which conveniently has a diffusive term that captures the mechanisms of heat conduction and a source term that describes heat generated by bees shivering. When bees are cold, they shake their flight muscles and wag their stingers. I'll skip over this, but the details are in the details. <laughs> As for density rho, we note that bees do not want to be too cold, hot, lonely, or crowded. So we, use, we assume that when bees are cold, she moves up the temperature gradient, the direction in which she'll warm the fastest. Similarly, when bees are too crowded or lonely, she moves along the density gradient to more befitting levels. Now, can we really use math equations to study bees? In the past, math models similar to my own were put to the test. Mathematicians and biologists took real data, covered up the results, and fed real initial conditions into the model. The model predicted that the key to their survival was that bees would form a thick, insulating layer of bees along the outside, thus locking heat on the inside. My research is improving the accuracy, applicability, and reliability of math models. As math models become more sophisticated, scientists gain a valuable tool to test initial hypotheses, validate and support new claims, and in general, help us study how a beehive behaves. Thank you. <laughs>